to Bob's garden. We've got some orchids for the household. These are very easy orchids and they're very adaptable to the house. But I'd like to talk about Phalaenopsis first. Phalaenopsis is also called the moth orchid. It's an ideal house plant. If you've never done orchids before, I would highly recommend trying these out. They're very, very easy and they adapt to a wide range of conditions in the household. So there are a few things we do need to know about the care though. The first thing is that these cannot tolerate full sun. They must absolutely be in shade. Uh, an east or west window with a few hours of morning sunlight, slanted sunlight, that's acceptable. And this is why it makes a really, really good house plant. The other thing you can do is you can put it into a darker corner of the house and you're going to put um, a full spectrum light over it. And the light should be about uh, 10 to 12 inches above the level of the plant. If you can see a shadow being cast by your hand down onto the light, that would be too much light. So these do like uh, a li li less light than other orchids. And uh, they're very, very easy to care for. When you water, always water with water that's not chlorinated. It should not be distilled. And you should also not have any water softener in it. Do not ever use distilled water. That's very bad for it. So we would like to water in the morning. And we want it to dry out by uh, mid-morning uh, to early afternoon. And uh, you can lift the pot up. And if it feels heavy, after you water it, test that out. You'll water it. You water it from overhead. You wet the leaves. It'll drip very, very fast porous soil. It'll drip through. And then after it's done, lift the pot up. If you'll get uh, an idea of what the weight is. Now, when it's going to, next time you water, it should be almost dry, but not completely dry. So it should, should never go for long periods of time with being dry. So it's probably the most difficult thing about the orchids to figure out the watering. So before you water, lift this up and feel the weight as right after you watered it should match. So you let this dry out a little bit between watering. Also, take a look at the top of the roots here. You can see that the orchid is situated above the level of the potting medium. It's this crown here should never be covered with soil of any type. So it needs to be on top. This type of orchid mix I got from repotme.com. It's a very good classic orchid mix. It's got sponge rock in it, which is this white stuff. It's got a lot of different types of the um, bark chips in here. They're fine. We don't like the really big, big ones, but this is really good for this. And uh, every two to three years, uh, it needs to be repotted because it gets to be um, the medium wears out. So you're basically gonna just remove all the medium that are in there. You'll find some roots that are kind of like mushy and you'll cut those off and you'll make a mound of this new potting medium and put your orchid over that like this. And it's very easy to do. You just work the, the medium into the orchid and, and, and you're done. Now to initiate a flower spike, it like cooler temperatures. This happens in August. The end of August and early uh, fall and um, we like to have a temperature difference of about 20 degrees between daytime temperatures and nighttime temperatures say 70s uh, during the day and at the 50s at night now if you've had your orchid outside it's going to get that natural temperature drop anyway be sure that this is sheltered from sun when it's outside though if it's in the house you can put it near a cooler window. I'm sure your house is cooler during the uh, night than it is during the day. And that will also, also initiate a flower spike. When the flowers are done, and these will last for very uh, many, many months, um, you cut the spent flower off at these points right here where they come out of the flower stem, the flower stalk. You can see one here that's finished flowering. And you can see we've cut this off at this point, and you can see a new flower spike starting to come up from that point. And you could cut down to this point. Here's one that's completely done, and now that it's done, we know it's not going to rebloom. We can cut it all the way down to the bottom. 
So uh, the other thing is that when you have an orchid, it comes with a tag with the name on it. Always keep the tag inside your pot because when they're not flowering, you will not know what kind of orchid this is. And it's nice to know. Um, this one, this particular one, is called uh, Timothy Christopher. It's called Pure Moon Green Pixie. And uh, it was uh, a, 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 a monk that developed this hybrid. Um, and uh, it makes for a very, very nice plant. So um, you do want to fertilize. We have an orchid fertilizer here. And during the winter time, I, I fertilize it every couple of weeks, uh, twice a month is fine, uh, with a very, very low dose of this. It's one quarter teaspoon and a gallon of water. During the summer months, uh, I'll increase that to uh, weekly. The other thing about this is that during the uh, summer months, it may dry out much quicker than you expect. So you want to keep an eye out on that. So your watering needs are going to vary from household to household and even within a household in a particular environment. So this is a good beginner's orchid, very easy to do, and uh, you would enjoy this uh, in your household. So thank you for watching Bob's Garden and we'll see you next time. Remember to share, comment, and subscribe on my videos. And please, be curious, not judgmental.